Thundergrunt. Called you Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody introduce yourselves. I am Jimmy George. I am a screenwriter and script consultant. I am Jamie Nash. I am a screenwriter and podcast enthusiast. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm Bob Rose. I'm a guy that is a fan of Jamie Nash and Jimmy George. Nice. Yeah. 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 What, well, yeah, and what's our... Wh- Time wave, dude. I'm a huge fan. Oh, thank you. I really do love it. Yeah, it, it just played at uh, Troma Dance. That's yeah. Bob's, one of Bob's films. Yeah. Um, so everybody also say your uh, uh, Twitter, Twitter handle. Twitter handle. I am at Jimmy R. George. I am at Jamie underscore Nash. I also have a like a newsletter I'm trying to promote because I have a new book coming out. Go so. for it. If you're out there, I don't know what I don't even know what the link is, but you can kind of find it if you find my Twitter. I ta- okay, cool. I pinned it. So. Nice pin. <laughs> so it. go to Jamie's Twitter and go to the pin exactly. post. Exactly. Yes. I'm, and I'm at Thundergrunt Bob. It's really yes. obvious, right? Yeah. And today we're going to talk about Toy Story Four. Nice. A yeah. movie yes. that we all saw really recently, right? Except for Jamie. Jamie. Has, I mean, Jamie's I mean, it's the only been a week. But it feels like. <laughs> but in it's Jamie, been a while. in D- Jamie days, that's in my like, days. That's forever. I completely. <laughs> that's forgotten. like six months for Jamie. <laughs> I saw right. it in a theater full of screaming children about 14 hours ago. Yeah. So I'm going to do my best to recall. This is the one Adam Rifkin wrote about the <laughs> yeah. toys. Right, right. Something. right. I don't know. Yeah. Something. I don't know. So, well, it's, it's a while ago. It's currently in theaters is my point. Yeah. But Jamie, so far, how is it doing? Right now, worldwide, it is at almost at 300 million. It's it's 291 million, 197. Man. Domestic, it's one hundred and sixty seven okay. million and it hasn't even gone into its second weekend. So it's it's killing it. Wow. So, yes, yeah, what's one it, week. There's a reason like, they made a four. Like it, I think the biggest question yeah. about this movie is why are you doing it? Yeah. <laughs> and I think Jamie just answered that that question. Is it on pace then <laughs> so, to be yeah. its highest grossing of the four? I feel I, that I, feels really high. I can't say, but the the other day a friend of mine and I we were talking about are animated movies still as big as they used to be? Like like this, like these Disney animated. And I went back and looked at they don't, Coco, and yeah. Coco made like a billion dollars. Oh yeah, I didn't yeah. realize it made that gosh. much money. So they're just um, as big. If they're, they're making big. Angry Birds two yes. and all that stuff, I like that too. Angry Birds trailer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, uh, and also, uh, I the, the trailer before it was Troll World Tour. Yeah, another oh, troll yeah. movie. How about that uh, yeah. Pixar that's like bright, the fantasy thing? Yeah, I think um, that looks great. That looks really cool. Um, What's the name Chanted, of that? Maybe? No, uh, no, no. No, it's not Enchanted. No, that's not. Uh, Shame on us. It had some kind of, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. I understand. Damn it, what yeah. was the name of that movie? It now looked, it's going to bother me this whole podcast. <laughs> it, it looked great, yeah. too. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I, the, I, the, I, the Chris, unicorns are like dirty Chris, alley yeah. cats. Right, right. Yeah. Chris Pratt and Tom Holland. Yeah, yeah. What's the name of that damn movie? All right. Everyone's going to be yelling at themselves. I know. Come on. Anyway, yes, Jamie, they are very much. Uh, there was people in line yesterday at the movie theater to see Secret Life of Pets too, all the way out the door. In line, so and it doesn't even start till September. No, <laughs> well, that's out. I thought that I, was I'm out. Just right? I'm kidding. No, it's out. It was, it's out. Right? Yeah. Um, anyway, These are the jokes, man. <laughs> I know. It's a laid back one because we're like Pixar is good. <laughs> yeah, Pixar yeah. is still making script money. Is good. Yeah, and oh, yeah. their scripts are good. I no, mean, no. I mean, yeah. you, we've brought this up in the past that like you, Jamie, you say you often use uh, animated. I, ones. I, I find the animated ones are the best ones to get the basics from because yeah. they nail the basics. Yeah, like they never miss on the basics. Yeah, uh, so they're they're really good character arc structure all the all the classic screenwriting stuff they just nail it and you can see it a little bit you can yeah. you know they yeah they kind of underline it right times, it's so. accentuated also yes. it's it's kind of i wonder if that also has to do with the actual production of these movies because if you're going to spend five years on a movie you want to make sure that script's pretty much nailed yeah. down right <laughs> yeah yeah and also uh if we could if 
promote our own show, uh, if you listen to like the Incredibles episode, we talk about there was it twenty four rules of script writing. Oh, the, that's, the, that's right. The Pixar's twenty one Pix- rules. Twenty one. Not rules. really. We we t- also talked yeah. about how they didn't really define this the out loud. Rules. It's more what was what it was, was the brought bun- out. It was a Twitter from, thread. Yes. It was not. <laughs> it wasn't like official. But they're applicable to everything. Some really. sad Reddit guy made them up. <laughs> 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 These are Reddit. And Pixar somebody's rules. like, "That's John Lasseter. <laughs> that's Andrew Stanton." So right. Supposedly it was an editor or something, a story editor or something, but who knows? Gotcha. I think it's apocryphal. still the rules were pretty good. They're good. They're yeah, good. We, we made going over them before is what yeah. i'm saying well so and this is kind of jumping ahead to who wrote it but creative screenwriting magazine has a great article up right now that's an interview with the screenwriter oh uh, what's her name stephanie, stephanie Folsom. yeah so stephanie Folsom, and she talks about the process of writing this and how they're literally rewriting to the very end so oh a, really okay. mm-hmm. a, a quick thing about stephanie Folsom as well uh she had a blacklist script that was basically Stanley Kubrick faking the uh, the moon landing and all that stuff. And it was a bl- it was like really high on the blacklist of yours. Blacklist is the list of of uh, the best unproduced screenplays in Hollywood for that year. And that she kind of rose to prominence through that script. Uh, she worked on Thor Ragnarok. Uh, she uncredited. I and already then, love her. Yeah, and then she, <laughs> and then right after that, she got this gig. I don't know. There's probably a million other gigs somebody like that gets in between. She said that she also did um, an uncredited polish on one of the Star Wars scripts. So okay. I don't know which okay. one, but one uh, of the Disney Star Wars. Yeah. Okay. Her, I I, well, I I know her. I know her husband, so I know she moved to San Francisco all this time, and he's in L.A. He's in the business too. Wow. So small world. Yeah. It's um. It's it's, Jamie Nash magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, so so she she had to move there basically. It's almost like a day job to write for Pixar. Wow. Yeah, well, so a, she was writing I mean, that's kind a pretty of on damn the, great day she job. Was so, continuing yeah. to write and we, and and yeah, we talk one of the things we talked about on the Incredibles podcast is the making of Incredibles shows that they would write a scene, bring it to the um the story department mm-hmm. and the story department is actually like the animators and the animators would bring up a rough version of that scene that's right kind of yeah. with stick right. figures and then show it to like the writing team and then they would rewrite it based on those visual mock-ups so it's a very different process yeah and i remember the thing about toy story it actually and all the toy story movies are like this they go through these long development processes they, they announced this movie in 2014 uh, Rashida Jones and Will McCormack were writing it, and right Rash- ar- Rashida Jones, Rashida Jones wow. was writing it, and oh, right around okay. the right around the time of the John Lasseter weirdness, yes, that happened, yeah, uh, she it and she denied that it was anything to do with that, but she actually they that team bailed on the project and said that the culture there didn't support women voices. Gotcha. And it, it was actually a little, uh, you know. It was some rough stuff in the Toy Story world. Right, yeah. Right, some right, trouble yeah. in the Toy Story world. And they left. Uh, and apparently, they rewrote 75% of that, I heard. Annie Potts said they, re- they were rewriting 75% of the script at one point. And I, I read articles that said, we always do that. That's nothing new. We always rewrite. Yeah. They say every four months, they bring it up, they show it, they tear it all down, give it notes, and then redo it again for the next four months. And it's an iterative process. Wow. So and that's keep, how it gets so good. Yeah. yeah they <laughs> yeah. keep going through these drafts. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like rewriting scripts. They just keep doing the script process is tied to the movie process. So they just keep redoing it. It's like a it visualization of the notes process it that is. like it writers really usually go it's, through. It's true development. And I would say that as far as I mean I don't know, uh, I, it's it's a dangerous thing to say but I would be like the first three movies are per- pretty much as close to perfect. Yeah. Yes, as movies get in general, but yeah. like script wise, like those are three perfect movies. Yeah, agreed. Much. Agreed. Yeah. 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 Uh, this well, one I I don't agree well, on that. We're going to go into it. We're going to go into it. <laughs> um who wrote it? Well, so Stephanie wrote it, um, and there's another, Andrew Stanton also gets uh, screenplay credit. Oh, really? Andrew Stanton, yeah. okay. He, what did I say? Did he I, I he directed him, right? The Chronicles of Narnia, right? Uh, <laughs> He's that guy. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I mean, he did other Pixar He did movies, other Pixar but... Shrek, I think. Um, he also directed Shrek. Wow. I could be wrong. Jamie, tell I, me I'm if I'm I'm going to look him up right now okay. just to make sure. 
So here are the, the things. The cinephiles out there, here, you assholes are dropping the look, ball. Look, it's been a long, it's been a long week. We're all we're all laid back on a Toy Story it's episode. Awesome. The next one is gonna we're gonna go hard. So he did <laughs> he, he did not write Small Soldiers, just to be clear. That was Adam Rifkin. Oh, I know uh, that. No, I'm just kidding. I, I'm, it's this. These are called callbacks. <laughs> oh. Uh, so. <laughs> If I didn't get it, no one listening is That's, going to get it, Jamie. I got it. <laughs> my my goal in, in comedy is just for one person to get it. So it's Jimmy's your, it's your Jimmy. audience. I got it, man. Okay. Um, it's it's a niche. It's a niche comedic talent. Uh, so he wrote the original Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Monsters Inc., Finding Nemo, Wally, Bernie, which I guess is a short, uh, Toy Story Three. I don't know why I'm doing this. John Carter, uh, Finding Dory, and Toy Story 4. There That's right. He go. directed John so Carter, too. So he's a too. powerhouse. Yeah. Powerhouse. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a resume right there. So wow. as far yeah. as directing, he did not. He co-directed A Bug's Life. Okay. Um, he He's listed as the director on John Carter, uh, Wally, Finding Dory. Okay. So I was wrong. I'm thinking of another guy. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. That's uh, fine. Brad Bird, maybe? No. So, <laughs> so here's, here's another interesting thing about Pixar. They are not WGA contracts, so they can kind of do what they want as far as credits go and things like that. So when I was watching, like the end of it, there were all kinds of names coming across that you would never see. You, you know, usually they're limited to like three or teams or whatever. But there's a whole bunch of original story by credits and listed in the original story by John Lasseter, Andrew Stanton, Josh Copley. Valerie Lapointe, Rashida Jones, Will McCormick, Martin Hines, and Stephanie Folsom. Wow! So they well, this all three movies preceding it and all the development history. Yeah, well, this so. this is specifically for this though. So it's a development on this, and they all get a credit. They might not if it was a real WGA contract. They would arbitrate that, and they gotcha. probably knock some people off. Gotcha. But in this movie, they all got credit. I even think I saw. I don't feel like scrolling down on IMDb, but when I was watching the credits at the end, I think they had like. Story consultant and all these other wow, kind of so weird they credits. really put a they can do whatever they, they can kind of do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't, I don't know if the animation guild is involved or something gotcha. like that, but they can kind of mix them. Okay, up. okay, wow. And that comes from the history of animation, where animators used to do you know do a lot of the story creation mm -hmm. just in the animation itself. Yeah. Makes sense. So they kind of write as they go. Well, let's let's start this off. We're going to talk about. Opening scenes and starting in media res. Help me yeah. understand this one, guys. Yeah, I think I, I wrote that. Yeah, you did. Jamie, explain, please. You no, know, I usually don't expect you just to use my words line for line. I know, <laughs> but I don't know what it means, so I don't know how to go to the transition. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. This is fantastic. It's, it's a great episode. It's, it's already great. It. It's yeah. like the, <laughs> the, the question, there's like no flow. It's just like, what the hell is a media res? <laughs> What's media res? Who wrote this? Who media resolution? This <laughs> I don't know. Um, so basically all I was trying to get at there was that it's, it would, I noticed with Toy Story, it had two scenes almost back to back that start in the middle of it. It just dumps you into the middle. And that's what really a media res means. It just, it's kind of like how Star Wars just dumps you in the middle right. of the story. Yeah, like yeah. a Buffy episode starting. Yeah. It just so. starts with an action scene. And yeah. The, you know, yeah. so we're already in tension. The audience is catching up really quick. It's, you know, the, the. The car is trapped outside. Right, right. Yeah, the yeah. plane, it's raining. The mission has already begun. The mission has already begun. We're we're almost at the end of the movie. We're at the end of a scene of no, a previous movie. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and th th Nine years earlier. Yeah. It, just in contrast to the thing that we talk about is don't start your movie with the wake-up scene and I'm going to brush my teeth and right. stuff like that. <laughs> you know, if right. you get your characters in motion, it's a lot more exciting. You can, you can do exposition through that. Yeah. <clears throat> and then they almost did a second one as well i mean because right. then you come off of that kind of flashbacky thing and then you go to the next scene right which is also kind of in the middle of a plan and they're doing something yeah it's a very it's actually kind of a similar scene it was a little weird in some ways yeah that they had like the same the same thing scene back again back. it'd be like <laughs> well it was separated with the montage sort of it was of it was. of bonnie playing kind with her toys yeah. Montage -y scene. yeah yeah uh just to Maybe Tell they us. felt that that was enough enough separation to yeah. redo it. To yeah, redo it, it'd yeah. be like coming in. It, well, I, here I'll give you an example of what it's like. I I was gonna say it'd be like Indiana Jones coming in from the beginning of his scene to the beginning of another, but that is kind of what the third Indiana Jones movie did. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, no, that is totally it's yeah, true. boom, boom, That's totally you know, yeah. It, it's yeah. kind of the same thing. Uh, but uh, I I like how they do that. It was very exciting. It was yeah. fun. 
Um, and you're right. It is very instructive. It's like a completely the complete opposite of the breakfast scene, right? <laughs> yeah. And and these are meaningful scenes. They're not just like teaser throwaways. Right. You know, they're not just like, here's the Bond action scene. And yeah. Then we're gonna go right. To the next I wouldn't even call the opening RC save scene. I wouldn't call that an action scene, really. Yeah. It's more of a heist scene. But yeah. yeah. yeah I, I know what you mean. But it all was all character, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, it's all character. It's, it's kind of like uh, the we, way. It, it, def- it redefined Woody again for everyone. Perfect. Exactly. Because exactly. this is Woody's movie. It's like, remember yeah. what Woody's greatest fear is? Yeah. And then it actually shows that, guess what? Uh, his greatest fear is that he's going to be lost or abandoned and the person, the toy he cares about the most, that is that happens to her right in front of his eyes. And right, he right. Just, and it's like teasing, like right. it, it's it's one of those great things where they kind of show us the end. You know, this is what the end for Woody looks like. Right. And like he's going to have to learn how to be okay with that ending, you know, that he's going to be lost and abandoned and ultimately all toys are lost and abandoned. When it's like all said and done, and at the beginning of the scene, that's like his worst fear. He's like, "Oh my god, mm-hmm. whoa, well, peep!" I think that's a good thing to bring up too. It's not in the outline, but one, I didn't get to the outline it, as much dude. as I want. But this was a maybe kind it of, is, and you don't understand. <laughs> the it might be Jamie's. I just don't understand Jamie's words. Um, this this movie to me was kind of uh, that, that after happily ever after. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, Toy Story three is the happily ever after movie, yeah. and now it's you know now it's this is the dangerous movie where it's like. You sh- you probably shouldn't have tread here, but yeah. if you're going to, they're f- trying to finish off a different story. This is yeah. the Dark Knight Returns of Toy Story. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Actually, sadly, it's probably more like the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Ew, like, yeah, but not as bad. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying like they <laughs> they rode off into the sunset in the last one, right. and this one it's like oh, and one now here's what's happening. <laughs> You know? I don't know where's a good place to talk about this because it's going to come up later and it's not on the mm-hmm. the list, but. What genre would you call this story? Not animated, absolved of animation. Toy Story Four. Toy Story Four. What genre? Where do you think this fits on I the mean, genre? Honestly, road movie. Oh yeah, well, it depends if you're going that direction. I think purely. Let's say this was live action somehow. That's what I mean. It would probably yeah. be like fantasy. Fantasy. Kids, fantasy? Think so? Okay. Really? Fantasy. Yeah, because anytime you have like toys coming to life and it's uh, like this magical realism. Oh, I, I thought think... you were asking more like the theme uh, of it. Like, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure what he's. Asking. I'm asking like, <laughs> you know what? I mean, if I was shelving it in a blockbuster and it wasn't animated, I guess it would fantasy, probably end up the, fantasy. The the reason right. the reason that I'm asking it. And screw it. Let's just skip forward a little and we can circle yeah, sure. back. Do the it. reason that I'm asking that is because of the coincidences, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, they are. Um, they're pretty heavy. There's. Like, okay, Jamie, you brought up the coincidence. Like, you noticed it big time. Yeah. Well, the one you get away with is kind of the Bo Peep uh, in the window. That's the one that that should be the one. Right? That should be the one. The so, fact that they ended up in that next to that store with the lamp right there, I was like, okay, that's right. the I'll, one you get. I'll accept that's this the one. one. You get. And the reason that I brought up the genre is because. So so let's reframe it for for people who haven't heard us talk about this before. The, Typically, unless it's like a comedy, like a straight comedy or a farce, which also is basically a comedy, comedy, comedy um, yeah. the the audience will only forgive one coincidence, and, and that's we're talking like pure coincidence, pure with, without pure explanation. Just so happens to be, right. it's a cinematically unearned victory, is what it is. Something yeah. happens that leads to, unless you're the final season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that. But um, thank you. Jim. So this, th- <laughs> this movie, I counted eight wow. major coincidences, wow. and I only would have count. Now, granted, I counted them. I looked at Jamie's talking points before mm-hmm. seeing yeah. the movie, yeah. so I kind of was looking Expecting for them. them. Right. Yeah, so yeah. that kind of shaped my experience. Okay. But when I was looking for them, I mean, they were huge and they were everywhere. I- just to um, give just to give an example, it actually took me out of the movie at the Bo Peep moment. Um, so for some reason, when he looked in the window, I didn't understand the lamp's connection to Bo Peep. Me neither. I, I kind of forgot that. about I the forgot lamp about yeah, thing. They yeah. needed a so, reminder. Somewhere. I would have preferred it would have been like her goats. Yeah, like yeah. that would have made me yeah, go, yeah. "Oh, it's Bo Peep." I yeah, I didn't. So I I was sit, my my brain was scrambling already. I was like, "This is kind of random." He just saw something. We're not that trying was to rewrite like, it. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. we're just um, it, yeah. the the experience. The, and my from experience the writing was standpoint. that part 
immediately I was questioning. I didn't understand it. Right. And then when he found her later, I was even double questioning. So it's I'm a like, double one. It was a double coincidence. I was yeah. like, and then he randomly ends up in the exact place where she's lost and been living for all these years yep. or whatever. Right. They don't really give the time frame. So my mind was just going bonkers. At yeah, because that that's not Pixar style. Yeah, I was. Like, I was actually expecting there to be a reason. Yeah. Given yep. like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the family came here for a reason that had to do with yeah. something. Yeah. No, no, but that wasn't ever well, given, yeah. right? So, not at all. No, no. Somewhere along the way, I figured out that the lamp must have had to do with her, and and because I think she explained they she was in there, about and, it. and so mm-hmm. then it was okay. Afterwards. They tell the story about how the lamp it's, is what they bring the lamp. It still Woody didn't talks erase about. the second coincidence. They landed in the thing nearby, and she was still there, and yeah. blah blah blah. I was like. One or the other to me, yeah. uh, having both seem like if he would have just landed there and found her and then found she used to be in the antique store that they went in, yeah. I would have been fine with it. Yeah. But, or could or, you consider it also like a thematic franchise, like kind of a coincidence where she just th- that coincidence happens and then they also just happen to be in another like regime of evil toys thing like like the chances of her being like, there and then and also, then also being, it's toy story 3 yeah, again exactly like you know what yeah. i mean like the, it's a lot of coincidences yeah well thematically even, too. even on top of that they, they keep going yeah, so go for, it. Go so, for it. Yeah, Jane. yeah um you know the first one actually is woody just so happens to pick up a bunch of trash that contains the perfect type of pieces needed to create forky mm-hmm. that in itself is a coincidence and that was the one that i was like okay there's your one in, in some and ways then, though i would use i would argue against that yeah, he okay was, yeah i would too because that's more like him being creative that's, that's only because you know forky's gonna exist right so that's good right. call yeah. i don't call. think that counts okay i don't think that um counts. If, no if he had found the exact thing to make buzz lightyear that would be a that's, coincidence. that's yeah. a coincidence forky's made a trash so it's okay that's right. a good call that's, yeah um um, Buzz just so happens to look up at the exact moment when Woody and Forky are flying through the sky, which allows him to follow them. Mm-hmm. That's a, yeah. just a coincidence. Um, the old lady dropping the key on the shelf. And this is, I, I thought it was worth, I thought it was a very instructive moment because, um, we've talked about this before. Um, the old lady dropping the key. Do you remember that montage where they're like, how are we going to get the key from the old lady? And they go through like five elaborate scenarios and she just drops the key. The key which is a reversal of expectation, so it's interesting, but it's also just handed. It's an, it's a victory handed to them, yeah. and they even have an insecurity line, which is the incur- insecurity. They say, well, that was easy. Mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. And that is them acknowledging that this was a lazy choice, right? right? So also, I was, like, shocked this, to see well, this in a Toy Story it, movie. I guess you could argue that it is a Toy Story movie if we take that respect and that's earn what respect I'm out of it. It is a comedy Right. So and that's and what I'm movie. asking. The two things where the coincidences are like a, a comedy. That's and why kids I brought movies. all this up. Is yeah. it a comedy and we just absolve it of these? But Pixar's above those. That's things. what I'm that's saying. Thing, yeah. yeah. So I had. I was like, well, I, when I, when these kept piling on, I was like, well, maybe this is yeah. a comedy and it's fine for, and it's. This for, is also Toy Story Phase Two. I'm trying to think for, from an instructive. Yeah, standpoint. No, I know. For, I know. Ex- for example, we you know I always bring up that triangle. This the, yeah, um, Robert McGee triangle. And at the top is arch plot, which is all usually Pixar movies. I usually say, I usually say, that's all your Pixar. That's your super. Movies. These are types of plots of the triangle. Types yeah, of right. plots. Yeah. That's at the top of the triangle. On the other side, on the left side, there's mini plot, which are like your um, your Sundance movies. You know, the ones that are a well, day in the life and anything can happen. And there's not a lot clerks. of conflict. And the clerks yeah. could be clerks, that or yeah. something. Uh, the sun. Yeah. The the sun sunrise movies or what, what before are sunrise before sunrise, before sunrise. Uh, yeah. Yeah. things like yeah. that and then on the other side you have an, anti plot which plays with the laws of reality and it, we don't care about things like coincidence and things like that right Wayne's World is often cited in that direction yeah you could totally see that scene playing out in Wayne's World how do we get the key they come up with all these plans. Bing. Right, so, but, ha, but ha, the comedy funny. earns it earns, comedy it, it, earns we, so it, we don't it, care. It's right. fitting to the tone and the nature of the story. It's right. almost winking right. at the audience. A yeah, bit. so yeah. We're, you're questioning how did this tone come into Pixar? Right, right. I'm, I don't or understand Toy Story even how as a franchise. they were excited about make leaving that uh, did, like did with you all have any other ones yeah well, i had okay. more I'll, I'll um uh, yeah, bonnie we'll bonnie, we'll bonnie just so happens to leave her backpack in the shop so they'll have to go yeah, back right. and get it later that's a huge one yeah they she didn't just call, so they didn't force her to forget it she just right. forgot and that, so that's right. the solution yeah. so that's the instructive moment right there i mean i am rewriting toy story here but so i read 
all the scripts I read, you know, I'm in the current process of reading another one right now of amateur scripts. And it's one of my criteria that I go through is, do you have any coincidences or conveniences or contrivances? And the average script I read has about 12. Okay. Um, and that is the writer gives the character who's trying to achieve a goal just drops a solution in their lap. And, and that one falls right. under that category where the hero can't get lucky, but sometimes the villain can. The villain can get lucky, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. it's one of those weird rules that yeah. the villain has, like, because that creates a plot. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, <laughs> but it, it can up the tension. It's... I completely agree with that, but I, I do think when a villain has to work as just as hard as your hero to achieve their goals, then it makes them a stronger villain. Yes. Yeah, so I, I agree. Think yeah. I no. to, anytime yeah. you throw a solution in the villain's lap, I've, it diminishes them. I've, I've yeah. heard some people dispute that rule about the villain can get lucky, but I find it sometimes fun for the villain. To oh, get it's lucky. way fun. You know, it's it can, like, it oh, you, fun. of course you get that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah right, right. <laughs> But yeah. um, so anyway, that that one was a, the biggest one for me. The backpack one. The backpack. It's like, and if that was the only one, yeah, big deal. You, you right? know what? I actually didn't even realize it happened until the end, and I was like, oh, she left her backpack there. Yeah, because yeah. I like well, that, that was convenient. I actually like I was like that was convenient, but after the fact, I didn't realize it actually had happened. That, that feels like one of those <laughs> yeah. ones I do see with new writers when they're when they're kind of plotting their story out and they know they have That's, to get from a to b yep so they just kind of make up a convenient thing to get them to a to b it's just kind of like well we know we have to get them out and then what do we do oh we'll just have her leave her backpack yeah we'll you know it doesn't really it's feel unearned. organic it just yeah it almost feels like something maybe they came up with after they came up with you know it's, it's a patch it's a patch yeah so if you think you're doing it to be and you write it off what do you what are you talking about writing off to be funny what is that word you use oh i don't know you just said it not long ago I don't even know. Oh, callbacks. No, was it, no, it wasn't callbacks. <laughs> no, it was no. a callback. He, did it, he said callbacks as a callback. As a callback. <laughs> the first time in comedic history. That's incredible. No, it's like apologizing oh. for the script or something. Oh, it's an insecurity line. Insecurity line, right? Right. right. Like they, they, somebody would be like, make some line about the backpack. Like, well, isn't that convenient? I actually see that line yeah. in scripts I read all the time. Yeah. Well, that's well, that's convenient. Right. That's because the writer is apologizing to the audience right. for their I actually, choice. I feel like like in comedy, the king of parodying insecurity lines is um, Trey Parker. Like he'll literally write something. It's like, okay, we're looking for the kid. Where is she? Oh, she's right there. <laughs> yeah, like it's literally making fun of insecurity. Yeah, lines. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, um, uh, the solution is just to reverse engineer it so that the character did something to earn that victory right so they could have just made sure that she forgot her backpack right I, take an effort to rip the backpack I, yeah. off of her so that she has to come I, back I think to the get key, it the right. key is to always be asking yourself what makes your hero's life harder yeah and er anytime you say that makes my hero's life easier it's a mistake. It's it's too easy. Make it harder. Almost That's every time. The, make it harder. Yeah. Well said, Jamie. I, I, well said. I mean, it's one of these little simple tests, but if you ever are coming across your script and you're deciding on a scene and you decide on something that makes their life easier, and it's not a fake easier. Like, you could see a version of it where you make their life easier, but then it's really a catastrophe. <laughs> but it's the keys it leads in the visor. to something harder. Yeah, it's the right. keys in the visor when somebody goes into a car, and how are they going to drive the car? They look up, and the visor's there. The, the, right. the, the sun visor has the keys. Right. Because I mean, that's the classic Seeing one. your hero squirm. That's a coincidence. Yeah, seeing how your hero gets out of these situations is what shows character. Right. If you just put a book bag on the ground, and she's coming back, then we don't get a chance. You're robbing them of a chance to see the character. Yep. I to call show them. By the way, I use the term book bag. That's from that's old school. <laughs> that's old school. That's what I still call book it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I didn't mean to skip forward, but I thought no, like, no, that the genre discussion was born out of do we absolve the coincidences or are they so, do they take think, us out of the story? I think that this to on that, I think that this Toy Story was trying to be funnier than I agree. the other I agree. three, and it was a markedly different tone than the other movies. So you're arguing on the side of it's okay. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying that since it's trying to be something different, I won't hold it to that right. standard of the original three. I, 
And I wonder if I went back. To, <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah. I'm trying here, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm on its side. I want it to win here. <laughs> no, knowing yeah. this, I'd almost have to go back and watch the other three to see if they do similar. Right. If we're just not remembering them because we had such wonderful experiences I, with them. Oh, no. I've watched them recently. Yeah. They don't Toy Story 2 is still my favorite Pixar movie. So, yeah. like, I can't, yeah. so good. I can't remember. I saw a video recently somebody shared with me. Maybe you shared it. Uh, just maybe it was. I don't know. Somebody uh, shared a video with me of just how. Like, Toy Story's always breaking its own rules. And oh, it, a I don't lot think of that it, was me. Yeah, and no, yeah, yeah. I, I wish I knew where it was. But um, so basically, it, it it really was talking about. It was kind of one of these cheap videos that you make and cut it together. Yeah, to yeah, yeah serve yeah, your sure. purpose. Yeah, but it was kind of like you know, Toy Story one. Okay, they can't they can't show themselves. They always have to hide. But what happens if they do show themselves? And then they do later show themselves to Sid and they're like, ah, yeah, yeah right, right. And, like, and the, kid, you know, the people freak so it's out. Like, what's yeah. the point? You know, why are they doing yeah. it? Yeah. And I think there's, there's some, you give it some leeway because yeah, it's definitely. funny or something. Yeah. Um, I, 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 there's a part of me that expected Toy Story 4 to be the one that kind of showed the human toy relationship when toys mm-hmm. come to life or something. Yeah. Just because we haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, to go in like some weird place, but anyway, it, I think I those. Know. I think what you're talking about, Jamie, would be a movie that's in the universe, but not about our characters. Here. Right, right. Which right. I would totally be about, yeah. like a side Toy Story. Like, where are the toys that defy the 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 fear of uh, maintaining their like toy nature and or, just like hang out with their with their kid for and me, just talk to them? For me, I wanted to have like the Blade movie where. <laughs> <laughs> Where you know how like st- no Stephen Dorff and Blade is like why are we cowtailing to the humans? Oh. We yeah, should yeah. be their master. Yeah, yeah. I want the yeah. toy that's like <laughs> small soldiers versus toys. Right. right. Yeah, that's Get a different Adam movie. Rip- Get out of it, it, it could back. exist in this universe. <laughs> It's just not with these characters. The shared Toy Story universe oh, movies. I, right. Yeah. yeah. But but this was Woody's. This was about Woody. All about Woody. A hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. I can't remember if it's like Screen Rant or somebody that does these pitch videos. Like p- uh, or, or, Screen Junkies. Screen Junkies. Yeah. They do like two hour pitch videos. Oh, or, th- this I is think. like one guy who pitches to himself. I can't remember. Oh, I don't know. Oh, what that it's, is. It is pretty funny. Yeah. But they, they mentioned like one loophole in even Toy Story 1 where they said, so Buzz is a... <laughs> I, I know Buzz doesn't know he's a toy, do- but he it. still chooses to go limp when humans are around. Yeah, yeah. How come they're? How is yeah. It? To me, that's you that's go... that double mumbo jumbo. To me, yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to know that. You I think it's instinctual yeah. to a living toy. It works. They... But no one's questioning but that. that unless you're but it's a good. Things. It's a good question. <laughs> it's a but great like, question. it doesn't need to be explained. But that's what I mean by they're they're already were taking liberties in the first movie. Yeah. They were yeah. Like, Yay! This is go with so this. by the fourth movie. Think, think about cars for three seconds. It's your yeah. mind explodes. Right. You can't. So, you so can't it, have that world. You know. So with <laughs> that <laughs> argument, then by the fourth movie, if a girl uh, forgets her backpack, big deal. Or yeah, like yeah. when they have the well, at least when they do it for comedy, like the key, I'd more point to it. Yeah. I think the back backpack things a whole nother because they're not you doing could, that for comedy could yeah. we argue that in the in the process of writing you could almost assume that goodwill is a factor too mm-hmm. is that when you have a franchise that has some of the best goodwill in the history of cinema you You're can throw in a, it. you can throw in a few coincidences yeah, I'm, maybe I'm sure yeah. I'm sure Avengers could get away with a few yeah. funny things I'm, I, I think, think they, 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 they I think they, they have, have. <laughs> they have a few times yeah. so yeah. goodwill kind of factors into this right I think you're right I think yeah. you're right uh, okay. But I don't know what genre this actually is. Yeah. If you remove the the kid factor and the you know, just yeah, the, that's why I was asking. It's but not an action. I don't movie. think it's a road movie because it's not actually on the road. They go on the road and the whole movie just takes I place just at one. This one just location. feels like it's not home. Now it would yeah. be like trains, planes, trains, and automobiles all taking place at that hotel. Yeah, you're right. Um, which isn't a road trip movie. It's something else. I, I had a hard time placing that heist movie. Me, I yeah, guess. I don't know. I don't Rescue. Know. A yeah, yeah. It's, it's got got all little, over the place. It's got a little bit of everything. Which is okay. It's okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah we're we're like three was a prison movie. Right. They are all very. The other ones are very hard defined genres. Wait, you know what? The, of their own. It, this is. And I really don't mean this as a huge criticism or anything, but this one does feel like it was looking back for story ideas. Yes. You know, uh, the you know even the beginning, you know, Risk. falling out of the, I got to go save them. I'm going to jump out of the, right, right. maybe maybe consciously it was. Yeah, doing, maybe consciously. Um, it was repeating Toy Story 3 in the antique shop, more bad things. You know, yeah, all these yeah. things. It felt like. To get story ideas. Except the, the villain Recycling. Re- re- was redeemed. Yes. It, it redeemed. Un- un- unlike three. Uh, and, yeah. yeah. Un- unfortunately, yeah. I I felt like because of that, it made 
the villain lesser and it was a lesser like Lotso was a cooler villain in some ways gotcha. and, and impacted me more right. than gotcha. this villain did but whatever i feel Those are I, small. I, I think if I, the, the problem with talking about this movie is like it's hard to talk about the franchise we you know, have to we talk have about to. the other ones. Well, well, this is a response to those movies. My yeah. thing I wrote, the one thing I did write on this outline was, where what is Buzz's function in this movie? Man. Because I really, I mean, he has some good gags that are funny. His voice box thing. I mean, his. That's great. But I don't understand what, why is he, the Toy Story movies have always been a one and two lead, like yeah. two leads. And this movie, I was like, is Buzz need to be here? He's yeah. not even doing I, anything. I, I, I thought all those characters were kind of like in the superfluous. Background. Yeah, well, they, it the, wasn't an ensemble as much. They had their part in the off-screen right. movie. It's such the a different movie. movie. It's not an ensemble. They're keeping, Woody could have literally just gone off by himself, and you could have written out the others. I, I like your the way you frame the question is, what does the movie think he's doing? Yeah, I wrote that. Yeah, yeah, that's important. What does the movie What's the think? Intent? Buzz, I'm asking so, you guys so I, to help so me I understand. So I think the intent yeah. of the Buzz story is to maintain like awareness of for the for the rest of the toys he's like the the character who maintains awareness of where Woody is so they can continue with their mission to stall the dad well that's from, just functional from leaving yeah, but, that, but that, that's what's the that's theme what of does. Buzz's story I, I, don't I don't think, think he, has. he I, has one well that that disappoints me because like the he's other movies such an important character are about both of them yeah yeah it, and it, this isn't it's almost like what they gave him to do they knew that the heartfelt moment at the end, the thing that was going to make you cry was him saying goodbye. His right. moment, right. And I did. And his yeah. line. I did cry. Yeah. It's not like I could, I could not <laughs> been watching this stuff since I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, you know, it, it, it didn't hit me in the feels anywhere near as much as the three. other ones. Yeah. Um, oh, three killed me. Three, yeah. right. three yeah. was yeah. probably the last time. But I seeing cried Woody's the like, I, I don't know if I wanted to see Woody quit. Yeah. Being, yeah. being a toy. Yeah. <laughs> like, gotcha. Oh, we like, that's what I'm saying is like That's interesting. This it's is the ha- after half the lesson after. you did you didn't want to learn the lesson. We'll get into that later. This is yeah, like we'll the most adult <laughs> Toy Story in a weird yeah. way. Oh, well, without a doubt. It's like yeah. it's the darkest one because like yeah. Woody giving up as a toy. What? No. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he's yeah. not. He's finding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah when, when's it time to retire? Why don't we get into the arc? Yeah. Get, let's, let's get, get into. In. No, let's well, get so, into the arc. So, yeah. so Jamie, what did you want to bring out? Because I I can't remember William Martell's Twitch concept. Okay, yeah. so. the only thing, this is a really small thing that okay. I noticed. So the Twitch concept really isn't even in there. Okay. But it's... It, what is the Twitch concept? So, well, I'll, the Twitch concept is, I'm trying to remember exactly how, it's a way to visualize the internal conflict. Okay. So the bad example would be the old soldier with the picture of the person back home or something like that. Yeah. You know, the, the, hack. the baseline. The, the baseline yeah. example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Die Hard, the watch, is a good example. Holly Gennaro's watch. Right, right. Okay. It symbolizes her career. It's a touchstone. It's a touchstone. Yeah. And at the end, she kind of lets go of it. The career is gone. Okay, you know, not so the it's the gone. emotional barometer of how your care it like represents it's, the it's characters a physical visualization yeah. of of that internal arc yeah. or it's conflict. it's uh it's it's the, the ta- re- it's the goose's I'll, I'll dog tags you, on top i'll tell of you why he call- <laughs> yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll tell you why he calls it the twitch too this is the part i remember because it's such a weird name right? it's a great streaming service and- it, that's right, <laughs> right that's right so <laughs> i think i think he said in like the pink panther movies like every time um trying to remember what the character's name was but there's one character so every time clouseau's mentioned the character twitches like uh, uh, you know perfect yeah Yeah. so that's why he calls it the twitch Twitch. that's perfect Um, uh but in this scene this isn't really a twitch but there's a scene where um that one scene where woody's hands are on the box and he kind of pulls them away you know like he's gonna leave right right, they come back to that in the end where he puts his hands on the ledge, yeah, and then he like you know he, he yeah, makes yeah. a different decision. It's one of those underlined um, moments, like you said. But that, they yeah. match this as kind of visuals. So there, anyway, it just a it was an example I noticed of visualizing conflict that when I was yeah. watching that was pretty cool without having the dialogue. Yeah, right. yeah, right. you you know what's happening inside the character's it, head. That without, whole scene, yeah. the end scene, has no dialogue right. when the decision is being made. Yeah. Right. And it, very it, noticeable. It reminded yeah. me of the Twitch concept. Yeah. It's not exactly like I don't think it's not a touchstone. Yeah, it's, it's not, different. I think the Twitch. You guys explain like what a touchstone is. Okay, a touchstone people? is sort of like uh, your dad dies, and uh, the only thing you have left with him is like this statue that your dad right, gifted right. you, and this statue is precious to you 
because it's it's how you relate to all of your like emotional issues that you carry around with you related to his death. And in order okay. to like visualize the character where the character is on the path to overcoming the loss of their father, you keep bringing back the statue. It's right? the bowling ball for mystery. Like, yeah. you can, and you put the statue. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean it yeah. works. And you keep putting the statue. You even put the ta the statue it's like structural integrity at stake. Like you threaten the statue, the statue could get its head broken off, and like the character's got to glue it back together. Right, and it's right. just a way to visually track over the course of the story without saying anything Emotion. how the character is feeling about like their inner problem. And then the way to show that they've overcome the problem is to like either give it away. Or if they lose it, it's okay, but they no longer need the object that they're holding all of their emotional problems. So a blanket. They don't need their It's a blanket. You don't need a security blanket. Blanket is anymore. a perfect Yeah. Perfect, it will be. Yeah. You know you know what? <laughs> Mr. Mom reference. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to, to me, one of the most amazing ones of these, because I didn't it it's just so perfect, was up. Up. Oh yeah. You know, because the house is kind of it. And the inside yes, of the house. He's living. And at the yeah, yeah. yeah and at yeah. the at the end he had he literally to save himself and starts throwing pieces away and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's perfect. Um, but up is really really does a good job of that visual. Because the house and perfect. the inside of the house and the pictures and everything. There's, Could you I argue use, there's that so many. Last Crusade, maybe even there's so many great like ones. the Holy Grail oh, yeah. with, with his father, like let it yeah. go. Yeah, it's yeah. A, like that's the moment you're that's like, it. okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I always use Goose's dog tags because it's so clean. Like he literally has the tags from his dead his friend dead, right. that he blames for his death. Right. And every time he's feeling guilt about Goose's death, he holds it in his hands and is like, talk to me, Goose. So and then he throws it into the oh, ocean yeah, yeah. when he's overcome right. the issues. And it's it's just so simple and easy. Yeah. So in the in that case though, so what is what is Woody's arc here? What he is? What, how do you what, what, Yeah, wrong way goal. Let's talk okay, about that. so this is our first talk about that. wrong way goal in this franchise, right? Every one of the goals, I didn't realize this until like five minutes before like we were going to get here. That Like, okay. oh, yeah, this is a great thing to talk about. Okay. We've talked about wrong way goals a couple times uh, uh, when we talked about American Beauty. Um, in the Oscar episode, um, okay. Lester Burnham's goal is the wrong way goal. Um, he's trying to sleep with Angela when he mm -hmm. should really be just be trying to like better himself. Um, and the audience knows it. The audience knows, knows the it. lesson that needs to be yeah. learned. And this is going to bring up other issues with the story. Um, the audience knows the lessons that need to be learned. And the character is trying to achieve a goal yeah. that is the wrong way right. to to it's sort oh, of an obsession right and we are rooting for them no don't do that learn the lesson and do something do the other thing right right in yeah. order to to overcome your issues and so um like in liar liar he keeps lying and that's not the solution right um uh, in Groundhog Day, he's abusing the time travel. Thing. Right, right. right. Yeah, right um, yeah. And and a bad example, a bad example of this would be, uh, let's say, my best friend's wedding. If you were, you know, the goal of her goal, the character, it's a wrong way goal. The, the character's goal is to uh, prevent the wedding, sabotage the wedding, right? The relationship, so that he, so that she doesn't, her best friend doesn't marry this other woman and marries him, her instead. Right. A bad example of that would be where the writer frames it so that we're rooting for her to succeed, right? The The writer thinks that what they need to do is make the audience root for her to succeed. But what we actually are doing is rooting for her to realize that, like, he's not the one for her. She needs to get over her issues and accept that he's getting married and be supportive of her friend, right? Right. right. So in this, uh, like, Woody is, like, obsessed with... Uh, getting, he, forky. Like, getting forky because he's stuck in this role to service of Bonnie. Right. That's right. Because he because Bonnie to him is a surrogate of Andy. Right. 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 And he is like unwilling to accept that uh, you're I, I compare it to like I, I the more I was thinking about it, the more I was like, he's kind of like an empty nester like. He was Andy's dad, and now Andy's gone and grown up and is doing his own thing, and he yeah. has nothing to do, right? He's, like, lost his sense of purpose since he's no longer Andy's dad, right? Yeah. And uh, and uh, he can't be Bonnie's dad because Bonnie doesn't love him the way that, that he did. But he's in denial of this, and the lesson he needs to learn is, like, stop worrying about Forky. I mean, Forky doesn't even want to be a toy. You're, it's kind of like he's trying to capture him and imprison mm -hmm. forky forky don't want to be a toy well there was kind of a a, a, 
a like beauty pageant mother type of thing going on. Like if I can get her to right. have Forky, then she'll love then me she'll too. Then she'll love me, right? Yeah, when the lesson right. he needs to learn is that there's more to life than being a toy in the servitude of a child. There's more than life than like being a child's guardian, right? right? right. And like, so the whole story is like an exploration of that. Like, yeah, and just as a and quick that's why it's great because it starts out on that shot of his boot. I thought that yeah. was kind of genius. Oh, with dude. this arc, is great. no, it's awesome. The Bonnie on the boot. Yeah. Um, and just as a quick aside, uh, this is kind of a different topic, and then we'll jump back. But it's um, and it, it, it uh, it's related. But to me, when I was watching the movie, I was like, there's some lack of urgency or tension here. Yeah, and it's because of this, I think. Yep. Because um. And and I was kind of diagnosing it as I was sitting there. I was like, yeah, I just don't feel like the tension, like in a normal movie, it doesn't feel like this. the stakes are life or death because she doesn't need it. She's kind of even moved on from Forky right. throughout the movie at times. Forky doesn't want the it. The audience even knows she'll be okay without Forky. The audience right. knows. They, yeah. they cue us into that. So they don't, they take right. us in a superior position to right. Woody. Like three, pe- three toys tell Woody... Toys get lost all the time, man. It's fine. Yeah, like yes. they literally just tell him to chill yeah. out, right? Yeah, and, and yeah. that's but he doesn't that's learn that this, lesson until the end. Jamie, this is I forget which arc it was, but this is the indie movie of Toy Story movies. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is internal conflict. This isn't like about the plot. Yeah. It's about and Woody and wrong way goals are about the inter- internal conflict. Right. Wrong way goals yeah. you usually see in a movie that's not your uh, traditional commercial story. Yeah, so Woody drives this whole thing with yeah. his action. If he just yeah. chilled out, it'd be yeah. a movie. <laughs> and it, yeah, and and it was unusual to see that in a Toy Story movie. I can't say it didn't work or it did work, but for me, there was something different about it. It's it unexpected. Felt different. Yeah, it that's felt, not the yeah. movie I was even remotely thinking. I, was I think that's a good Cause, thing. Because I we're, guess for four, yeah, yeah. In a weird sort of way, <laughs> then we're we're kind of sitting in judgment of Woody. Uh, we're, we know something more than he big knows, time. You know, so it's a different kind of thing as opposed to the usual way movies work is that we are worried about whether the uh, win or lose, and right. and we're along that journey with him. In this case, we're not there at all. We don't. If he just quits, that's fine. Everything will be okay. So we're, it's a weird, more intellectual space. Yeah, you occupy as the viewer of a movie like this, as opposed to the emotional ride you get from more more it, tension. And I have to it. wonder if, if that's to, if kids are responding differently to this. Than I don't they know. Are to the other if ones. I had to say it like a theme, or I don't know if I want to say the mm-hmm. word theme, but to me the movie came off as the rule rules are meant to be broken. Ooh, because Woody, out of all the toys throughout this whole franchise, I mean, he is a sheriff. He's a cop. Yeah. And he's always followed the rules. He's been ardent about the rules and That's what he's true. supposed to do. And he's been loyal to a T up until yeah. this movie is him learning that sometimes you got to break the rules. Wow. That's what that's how, what I came away with it. Wow. And it's because of his arc, what you were talking about. Yeah. So. I, Jamie, like you couldn't have said it more perfectly. Like, so we might as well talk about stakes at the same time. Yeah, we're skipping around, stakes. but who cares? Yeah. I, I, cause I think the urgency informs kind of the all, they're, they're, they're together, all together, right? Yeah. So, so, yeah. okay. So this is I, a weird one in that in, in good movies, this is what happens. It's like the plot, the urgency, all these things are kind of tied kind together, of, yeah. whether they work or not. They're right. all kind of a big jumble. So I think it because, works. Because, I wouldn't say this oh, work. I think it works too. Yeah, I think it yeah. works too. Yeah. We're not like giving this Dude, a bad review. I think this is one draft away from being as good as the other three. Yeah. Um, but it's still great. It's still great compared to I mean, all. I mean, you're talking movies. about three incredible movies. <laughs> yeah. Um. So since we know the lesson, mm-hmm. we understand the lesson is to stop trying to impress Bonnie yeah. and move on with your life, right? So, getting back to the RV is not a good. Is okay. Like the best thing that could happen to Woody is being abandoned. And so since yeah. the best thing that could happen to Woody is being abandoned, we don't feel an urgency to get back to that RV, right? Mm-hmm. And then the second yeah. problem is this has like so so usually when you Can don't I add feel, something keep, before you on Yeah, dude. Not just the RV, the audience doesn't even really understand why he even needs cuz we don't really want him to go back. He doesn't even need his voice box anymore. That's what I'm yeah. Cuz the voice up. box only Oh, sorry. No, no, I, dude. Well, fine, who the cares? voice box only serves the humans. Right. It doesn't serve him. So so, so he doesn't need it. So here's the yeah. here's the what usually happens when you're reading like a script, like a like an amateur script um, that lacks urgency is characters are expressing urgency and there's nothing in the story to motivate that urgency mm-hmm. or 
there's just no deadline and nobody's you have a clear goal like i'm reading a script right now that has clear goal awesome right we need that yeah clear obstacles awesome right we need that clear stakes so it's got all these huge ingredients but then there's no deadlines anywhere so you have 150 pages where the character could achieve the goal whenever right it doesn't matter usually if they... that's a problem with the stakes yeah like this one has stakes but there's has no stakes but there's something missing in the stakes the right wine well so this one what are the stakes so say, so here so that. so the stakes are there's two set major sets of stakes and that is well there's there's tons of stakes but the big ones are uh if he doesn't get back to the rv he's going to be abandoned and he's going to become a lost toy and that is woody's worst fear and then the second one is the voice box but the problem is he never expresses vocally to the audience his fear of losing the voice box. He never says, I'm scared if I lose the voice box, I'll become just maybe, like Gavin. Maybe that should have been the opening scene. <laughs> but it's not set up. Because like that's that, his viability. Yeah. Right. It's not set up that, like that Bonnie loves the voice or something, right. which would also be a And case. that's as easy Or he was passed up by a child I think because the his voice intention, didn't work. Right, or somebody, yeah. The right. intention is, though, to show that she was like... A toy's worth is on its functionality. It works really well with Gabby, and they right. explain why she. And wants we're just supposed it. to transfer that to Woody in but our minds, right? It's, I mean, it's such a simple thing. Like all, he, all, if he had just said, like, don't if if she takes my voice box, no, I, I will, I'll be I will broken. be abandoned. I'll be broken I'll and be abandoned. A, I'll be just like the the toys in this antique shop. You want to turn me into you, you right? And yeah. that's a, well, that's yeah. why I mean, we'll get into we can get into villains and then minute he accepts too, but, it. And, yeah, so right. so. But the other thing is, he's too confident that he's going to get back to the RV, right? And so, we so that's what I meant to say. Where usually those those issues that I described are there. Here we have a clear deadline, right? And we have clear stakes. But the main character doesn't fear them, and we, the audience, don't fear them. Mm -hmm. So, like, if if because we want them to happen, right? We want we, the bad thing we, to happen. We, right? we know that if he loses his voice box, it might actually be a good thing for him, and we know that if he gets abandoned by the RV, it might be a good thing for him, right? So there's no urgency. Also, the movie pretty much says that if he get those two things happen, he gets to like live with the love of his life on the road for the rest. Right. So you know what I mean like it's, it's it's all a result yeah. of us of it being a wrong way goal story. Right. Really. Right. It's all a result of like the audience having the superior position. It's a therapy session you, for Woody. The I think whole that movie. you you hit it because I don't think the other I was trying to remember. I don't think the other movies have the superior position. Mm -hmm. We're I would doubt it. We're in the toys perspective the whole time. The other movies want us to get back to Andy's room and everything be safe and good and normal. Yeah, again. yeah. I mean this, this movie is not that. This is a movie that like set, takes the 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 main problem that the toys are trying to fix in all three movies is to not be lost. Mm -hmm. And then this movie reframes that same plot Plot line like oh my god the biggest fear is a toy being lost and says this could be the best thing it's, that ever happened to this movie's toys. like spielberg making close encounters now and richard dreyfus not getting on the ship to stay with his family yeah mm -hmm. that it's like you know it's it's two totally different perspectives yeah. on life i love from it the first movie to this it gives it a reason for existence it, it does completely cause... destroys rewatchability <laughs> no i just you well, assholes! <laughs> you want to be lost? Yeah, Don't right. get them! Don't! <laughs> right, right. I'm throwing away my DVDs. Woody! Right now. Yeah. What are you doing? Don't you know in like 20 years you're going to get lost and it's going to be know. the best thing that ever happened to you? But they had to go I guess, through all those. Okay, so maybe this kind of answers my earlier question of what is Buzz, Buzz's function here? Is that I guess through the franchise, Buzz is the one who came in, didn't know who he was, and couldn't accept who he was. And in this movie, he's the one who we we know needs to stay with the camper he's not he, there yet he's not even remotely there yet he's not he's comfortable with who he is he just wants to make sure everything's okay with he's, his friend but buzz is more well-rounded in this movie than he's ever ever been, been no he's what yeah. woody was in the first movie that's they switched places. That's perfect. They switched places but pretty much. Perfect, but yeah. even even to the point that he knows to be the mentor and tell Woody it's okay to yeah. leave. I mean, you know, but I'm saying he's he has always he's the Woody's role. Yeah. Yeah. Of being like, hey man, like this yeah. is what's going on. He and... even knows that the book bags the book bag. Yeah. Says it again. The backpack, <laughs> Dude, book bag the backpack is, it flows. <laughs> no, my my students always, what's a book bag? They're always like really confused. So I'm trying to um <laughs> It also makes you think, like, do all toys go through this conflict? <laughs> like, right. will Rex this do it one day? Right, Probably. this, ex yeah, this yeah. existential. Well, yeah, will Hams go through it one day? Yeah. You know, well, or do they yeah. not evolve enough? Is Woody just a unique toy that 
because of all the experiences we've seen him go through. Go through. Like, he's had enough right. that he's almost developed It's like beyond. his level of sentientness is, 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 is as beyond. human. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I, we didn't And that's it. pretty deep stuff for us talking about a Toy Story movie. Dude, it's really so deep. It is. It's, it's, here was the only other... You, you guys just saw it. So maybe... You, I, are there learning moments that Woody has throughout? I couldn't remember them. It's more like okay, so so the lessons. Le, I think uh, with let's, Forky, yes. Let's okay. tell, Forky. Tell what is it? Well, I mean, with with Forky, he does. He's at, like Woody's never had to actually like take care of a toy who doesn't want to be a toy. Like Forky knows what a toy is. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's like, no, I want to live in the trash. Right. <laughs> so Woody's never <laughs> experienced that, that before, and yeah. I think that kind of helps. That's a learning moment for Woody, where he's like, wait a minute, the idea of a toy not wanting to be a toy. How could you not want to be loved by this girl? Right. You act like all I've ever wanted was to be yeah. loved. And I, you know, how could you not want it? So Forky is that thing. Like you can have that position of, I don't need to be loved. And then they, you know, he teaches Forky that it can be great. And right. then he teaches Woody that he doesn't need it. So, yeah. Well, so I, is that I, what you, I'm, I'm sorry. Building off of what, yeah. Building yeah. off of what, yeah, exactly what he okay. said. I, I wrote that there were, because uh, I might have this wrong now that we've been talking about it. Um, like we know what he's fear, right? His fear is being lost and abandoned, right? Um, and becoming a lost toy, a, becoming a lost toy, right? Yeah. And 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 the the story like explores that fear of abandonment and like and losing, not having purpose in five ways. It even it even explores it through Bonnie's first day of school, right? Mm-hmm. She is no longer. A, like a child that's like a toddler in a room she's brought into dropped into a new situation abandoned by her parents and thrown into a situation where she's not so she's not sure what she's supposed to do right and woody is watching her struggle through this and he's like trying desperately to help her because it's sort of like what he's going through and then the second one is so forky it doesn't want to be a toy, like you said. Like he yeah, he yeah. he doesn't he thinks he's trash, right? And and he like the last thing he wants to do is be a toy, right? And so that's another way to like yeah. teach Woody uh, one side of the argument. He's, a, he's the reason I'm glad this movie exists. Is yeah. Forky so great? I, I, I wish that that yeah. they would have done more with him. I think he was like the second awesome. half of the movie. He's got nothing to do because yeah. once Woody convinces him, well, Gabby, of what he I wants, think, you're like, okay, I we just need Gabby to get it back to the man. I think Gabby is the one who convinces Forky. So Gabby teaches. So Gabby is a character who views herself as trash. She is a toy but she who doesn't want views to be, yeah. herself as trash, and she wants to be anyone's toy. She's never had anyone to, right. to be her to be her child, um, and she thinks that a toy's purpose is to make a child happy, right? Mm-hmm. And and Forky thinks that. There is no such thing as toys. There, he's not a toy. And then Bo is happy. Bo is the one who understands the lesson. Bo is the way that we learn that this is the lesson Woody needs to learn because she's right. a ha- she's a toy who is like has like gotten over the fact that she was abandoned. And mm-hmm. we saw when she was like yeah. taken away. So uh, we got some to people see. Com- online compared her like to Furiosa. Yeah. She's like the Furiosa <laughs> of this movie. Ray, <laughs> like, she's the Ray. She's scavenger. She's already yeah, passed yeah, all of yeah, it. She's yeah. like. She knows who she is, and that's it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so he and she's like, "There's more to life than being a kid's toy." Like you, you know, there like life goes on. Right. So I mean, I think we learn the lessons, and Woody learns the lessons from all of those characters. And and Gabby's the one I think who teaches Forky like being a toy. This is what being a toy is okay. by like I showing. I remember Woody saying something. Well, about Woody Bonnie. tells him, but yeah. then Gabby shows because Forky when the book. When they're walking down the road. He, For, Forky has like a change of mind there, though. He does, but you know, if you if you. Like I gotta get back to the, Bonnie. I the remember big, that. The right? big yeah. moment for Forky is witnessing Gabby. Yeah. Uh, like uh, witnessing the little girl be interested cause... in Gabby. He's like, mm-hmm. this is her moment. Mm-hmm. This is when, and you can see like Forky suddenly understands the value of being a toy, which is maybe where the movie is slightly flawed. I guess. Like, shouldn't that have been Woody and him? Ah. Should there? Let me ask you guys. This. I got gotcha. you. Let me ask you guys this. Should there even have been a villain in this movie? Because I think there shouldn't have. I, I think the conflict should have been like, it should have just Jamie? been like getting from point A to point B. I don't think there needed to be like, so a little a more bad like, toy. like the first movie. In some yes. Ways, no, so. exactly. I don't think Gabby's great and all, but 
I think that she could just not exist in this movie. Right. And, and could the be dummies are a great thing. visual and all yeah. that stuff. <laughs> it's cool. The, min- I, the buddy yeah. minions are so good. The so bu- good. dummy minions. Duke Kaboom. The, the, I mean, Duke Kaboom. Duke Kaboom. Duke Kaboom. <laughs> like the best so thing good. in the movie. But <laughs> yeah. He could be. I couldn't stop I'm laughing. Not, no, he was awesome. <laughs> he could still help them get to point A to point B. He could still be in there. What I'm saying is. I, I know what you mean. I don't think that the antagonist of Gabby needs to be part of this it's almost like she was there because it was understood there has to be a villain mm-hmm. whereas like you just said jamie the first movie is getting point a to point b mm-hmm. it's yeah. just literally them getting on a truck and sid really a, that's, yeah, the, that's the that's the big action scene sid, on, uh, sid is a villain but he's more just like an episodic he's an, obstacle. He's an I obstacle i want i wanted gabby to play more like sid mm-hmm. and like he uh, like a like like one or two scenes and then it's like she's out of the picture but it felt like they were trying to push her as the main villain and i was like there shouldn't be a villain here at all. Gotcha. The villain is his conflict. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. The, right. Yeah. That's yeah. the story is what yeah. he's inner conflict. The antagonist is his internal antagonist. Yes. That's yeah, what yeah, this yeah. that he has to and overcome. It's, it's such a weird idea yeah. for a Toy Story. Yeah. Movie yeah. Do. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I'm not saying she's bad. I'm just I think it could exist without her. I think she's as perfectly constructed a villain as you could make for this movie, though. She mm-hmm. is a glimpse in that because like. Uh, right, she right. is. I'm just. I think there is a version that doesn't have her, and it's yeah. it's really also good. Gotcha. So, what do you think, Jamie? You think it needs? Or a she could have not been a villain. She could have just been in the antique store with her story and her right. conflict, right. and not trying to get his voice box and hurt him. Or mm-hmm. you yeah. know, and there could be no villainous intent, yeah. no malevolence there. You're saying they're telling a non-commercial story, and this they were just they 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 added they added the villain to make vi- it more arc plot. Mm-hmm. They yes, mm-hmm. yeah. She even they even gave her like you know, minions and everything. And yeah. I was like, which I, I love. Yeah, <laughs> they're great. I'm, believe me, they're a f- amazing visual too. They're just yeah. amazing. But I yeah, I don't think there had to be a villainous intent with her at all. Gotcha. I, I it's in some ways not not to redo the movie or anything, but I did feel like it was a weird movie in that it was taking from all these different pieces. Like it, right, like the carnival almost reminded me a little bit of Toy Story two and yeah, the, right. The, the, Search for uh, it, Forky it, reminded me of one, and the, the yeah. cool, reminded the cool me of three, thing about this was... is it reminded me like of of horror movies and weird movies more than this franchise yeah. ever mm-hmm. has. And I, it oddly reminded me of like Ghoulies two and stuff. I was like, why am I thinking about these other? And things you know while what? Watching this, we've talked about this in you the know? past. That might have been up on the board, mm-hmm. and they that were like, been. finally, yeah. we can use this stuff on the board that we've been wanting to use for a decade and a half. In, in a know? weird, it might have been as simple yeah. as that. In, in a weird sort of way, though, I think the antique store itself was the most. Um, Kind of, I wouldn't say boring is the word that comes to mind of all the visuals they could like the yeah. the carnival was kind of underused in a weird yeah, sort of way. Yeah, it would have um, been interesting to just make it all it happen. The villains the layer, so they it had did. to be there a lot. I, I get yeah. why they had to be there, yeah. but it seemed like the whole thing was set in the least interesting. You know, yeah, you could places. take the antique yeah. shop out of it and just have the carnival, and it would have been yeah, like put the, the same movie. Somehow in the really. carnival, yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. Like, Nobody will buy me or yeah. Nobody like, ever asks kind of for me when they win again. the prize. Yeah. <laughs> also, it's an environment filled with toys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, exactly. they, you know, Key and Peel and all yeah, that. Yeah. Like you know, like they do address it, yeah. but I feel like they could have played with it a little bit more. Yeah. 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 It was like, a really cool setting. It's a cool yeah. setting, it an and there's, there's set toys piece. everywhere. Yeah. It's just like they didn't play with that part of it yeah. at all. It could have been another movie. Yeah. 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 Well, what do you so, got? Like, have we really talked about uh, premise delivery? I mean, that's what we're just talking about, right? Yeah. I think that's what we're know? talking about, right? Yeah. These movies are so good with that. They're yeah, so good. They they just know enough to even something like in the beginning when the monkeys save them, you know, which you know, <laughs> yeah. just little touches. That's a whiteboard right there. That's a exactly. whiteboard moment. Yeah, yeah exactly. The string comes what are out. All the monkeys. things that we could yeah. do yeah. in this right. premise. Just yeah. Keep adding the toys. Everything should be toys, one after another, yeah. and they. You know they they do so good, with but them. I do think the premise delivery is based around um the the lesson, and that is like we're gonna take the same scenario of a lost toy yes. scenario yes. rescue and frame it around Woody needing to learn that like being lost and abandoned yeah. will lead to that, like the best thing that, that could ever happen to him. That's why, like yeah. you say, it's retirement. Yeah, antique <laughs> is thematic. Yes, so they, exactly. They dig yeah. into the antiques. What does it mean to be an antique? Right. Second it, chance. What? It's very answer, on Jamie. the nose. It needed to ha- take place in a store about old lost yeah, it things. Does. It yeah. makes so, sense. Uh, yeah. yeah. Duke Kaboom. Uh, yeah. You know, he's, the, he's, he's a relic his, from the yeah, And his owner yes. threw him out, yeah. and he can't get over the fact that he was a thrown out toy. I mean, right, all these right. toys think that they're unworthy of being a toy. Except Bo. Except for Bo. And she's like, who cares? Who cares what the kids think? You right. can do your yeah. own thing. Yeah. But I think. 
it, I thought it was nice that like all the toys helped uh, Gabby get to finally be a toy because like in order to be the toy that like learns that she doesn't need to be a toy anymore she probably needs to learn what it's like well, to have a kid that's what i'm saying i'm not trying to rewrite it but you could approach it like she was kind of a instead of being villainous she could have been extremely sad yeah a sad character a sad that needed character to give that needed, a new yeah. lease on life yeah. as a toy i understand yeah. it, it created more plot dude kaboom was so good dude kaboom is great <laughs> Like those two, like he kind of served that Jacques. a little bit. Yeah, he kind of served that. Yeah, but he doesn't really have like an ending to his arc other than becoming. Well, no, he, he makes the forty foot jump that he yeah, couldn't he make does. before, and they and they achieve yeah. that because they show him failing to make the jump before. Yeah, so it works. I that was works. fine with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I think the premise delivery is so good in these movies and the cleverness and all that, and I think it's because of the iterations they do, the constant iteration and teamwork yeah. and collaboration yep. that they do. That it kind of makes up for any possible defect. Yeah, like the coincidence. You're entertained yeah. second by second, and it's with so much cleverness and top of its game yeah, the, comedy. The only flaw is that stuff. there is like maybe one flaw. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's yeah. so little, like yeah, to even yeah. complain about it. But but the, it, yeah, you. I mean, when you hit on that urgency, Jamie, that mm -hmm. that really kind of yeah, that's sunk a fine in whole movie. like why it felt like a completely different movie because. Yeah, and it, it's it's really an interesting movie in that we can have you know we have a lot of discussions, a lot of constructive uh, lesson you know moments uh, from a movie that is very enjoyable, very good, and the top of its game. Yeah. You know, but you can still question even the best movies and learn something for your next right. Thing that maybe it didn't cripple this movie, but it might cripple yours you right know? if so, you were to copy i can let the backpack just right, fall right. coincidentally in the antique shop no big deal but, but because of most humans on this planet will never notice that backpack <laughs> so you know what i mean I'm like trained to yeah yeah, I'm I, being... yeah like i kind of didn't really until like the very end so it, you it's, know it's the type of thing that if you do it 12 times in your script right which yeah. a lot of people are doing then it's that's, that's a, problem. a big problem. It's excessive and it's it takes this you out of the story do it that much. This though. does it eight no, times. I yeah. counted eight. Eight. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we we debated a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah some yeah, of them was did. being a nitpicky asshole. Yeah. He, he needed um, to get. I think Forky's <laughs> fine. I think how Forky was. He needed to get his numbers up to eight. <laughs> yeah. Because no, you know, like when people say, like it, it's how do those like you have two characters that are on the poster and then in the movie they meet. And somebody will be like, it's a coincidence they met like that. And I'm like, no, no, we're watching the story of how they met, met. Right, right so that's yeah. not a coincidence yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right right it's like, and i think the forky's creation is we're watching a story about forky being created i'm on your side so, on yeah. this now i know seven. I'm, <laughs> seven seven i'm explaining to whoever's listening, listening. why we're yeah, saying yeah, that yeah, yeah yeah right well is there anything else we want to say about touched on it all, i think man. we've touched on any any yeah. problems we i had, think but... you pointed out the main thing that you pointed out to me that i really hadn't thought about until this discussion is the superior position mm -hmm. yeah and right. the fact that the audience is ahead of woody the whole time mm -hmm. is new to this franchise and it, it's a huge narrative shift it doesn't seem like it but it actually changes the way you watch a movie yeah the audience the way that the, you know it, it, it's yeah. a different thing it's a it big weirdly movie. it since it's outside of the own arc that it already every th like the arc that already finished is the andy arc yep like that's mm. done right yeah. and i think what you said jamie about that you know that kind of justifies why we would want to even have to see this movie yeah like woody had a story left yeah and this was it like it please don't it. Do, don't do like Toy Story five and six, and Woody comes back or something. Like I don't want to see. Woody that. doesn't need to be in it anymore. But we got, they can do the other. He had ones. two of the biggest endings of his existence. He's ever gonna have yep. right here. It was yep. three and four. We're like, yeah, you can't have two. Just that's yeah. Enough. His life is. If enough. you make one, it has to be unless buzz. he like starts creating to toys. <laughs> he becomes right. Geppetto. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Like I, and there's a, he like runs a town of just toys. You know, there's I, no humans. I think the next step will probably be when they start mixing the movies. That it's a cinematic universe, so it's Toy Story versus Cars. That's, oh, that's it might happen. It might be Wally -E yeah. versus Coco. It'll be yeah. yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll just all be in the same movie. In, it'll be Inside Out of Woody. Um, yeah. or something oh, like that. that'd be actually kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, do we want to say what we learned, or I think we already said. I mean, it, kind I, of. I, I learned I feel the like superior we're... position was yeah. like the reason that it was a, such a different experience. The yeah. wrong way thing for me. 
Uh, like I couldn't put it into words. So thank gotcha. you. That's what that's gotcha. what I kind of got. Did you get anything, Jamie? I learned nothing. Okay. Good. <laughs> Jamie knows all. Yeah, we know Jamie knows. So <laughs> <laughs> let's put him on this Jamie, pedestal. Plug the newsletter again, real quick. Oh yeah, plug it. Go ahead. I don't have a link or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just go find to, it. <laughs> go to my Twitter, find a link for it, and sign up for my newsletter because I'm trying to build the numbers like as a author independent author it's really hard to get the word out on twitter and stuff like that so a lot of authors actually go old school and use email so sign up i'm going to be sharing like because people can't and, avoid emails and oh yeah exactly i'll yeah, probably yeah. share like stuff about like when the podcast comes out and stuff I'll, nice I'll, so i'll give writer tips and stuff like that but also i'll slide in some of my uh anything i need to uh pimp out a little bit awesome so. so at jamie underscore nash at jamie underscore nash is the twitter go find the thing you'll i constantly retweet it so you'll see it <laughs> <laughs> okay good man. yeah good yeah. good all right guys all right, thanks for listening see you at toy story 5 bye to infinity and beyond oh gosh that's a dad thing to say at the i'm end. a dad type personality <laughs> there's a snake in my boots <laughs> i'm not saying anything bye You've just listened to Writer's Blockbusters, a screenwriting podcast featuring two professionals and another guy. Available only on Thundergrunt. Uh.